Bennett. What's up? I want to know the top five woodworking tools you can't live without. Boom. Those five. <laughs> These are five things that I find that I need at least once every day, regardless of what I'm doing. So I've got my square here, which has the ruler on it, so I can check angles on machines, I can check angles that I make, I can measure small things not carrying around a big fucking ruler or whatever, but if I have big stuff that I need to make sure I have measurements on that's past my six inches, I've got my measuring tape. One of the biggest things that I have to constantly check is thicknesses, spaces, get numbers down, decimal points, all that other stuff with a lot of the stuff that we use. So what is this? This is a caliper. Measure! So I can sit here and go, oh, I need a 0.818 inches to make this this size, or I use this end to figure out, gotcha, <laughs> how large that screw hole is on this, so I have to copy it over here. Helps right. me fine tune and accurately measure certain things. And then just a multi-tool, just because you never know, and a razor blade, because Gotta cut a bitch something. These are the five tools that I use almost every day. You can't actually do any woodworking with these tools. <laughs> Just for you? Yeah. We're gonna delete this from my list. You're gonna turn around and you're yeah. gonna look at my other woodworking tool. <laughs> what, the, the CNC? <laughs> but this is what I'm talking about. Like, what I do currently, mm. these are the tools that I use the most. Yeah. So without them, my right. job would be infinitely harder. So with all of these things, these are my top five. I'm basic, <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> For fine woodworking, really detailed stuff, that's the stuff that I love. So I would say, I only have three tools right here, but I'll find two more. If you're doing fine woodworking, if you're doing joinery, sometimes the tip of a pencil is actually larger in diameter than you'd want. Right. And so it's always nice to have a good marking knife where you can just score and get a much finer line. Mm. Now along with marking knives, you have these marking gauges. These are actually pretty awesome. You can set these to whatever dimensions you want. You can lock it in and then make repeatable, repeatable score lines. Oh. So it operates the same where you have like a really fine, a really fine score line that lets you be really, really accurate. That's cool. And this one's actually really nice. It's also got a micro adjust, so you can you can move it in and out. But if I score a line, measure it, and I'm like, oh, I'm a little bit off, I can actually, there's, a little, there's another knob right here, and I can very, you can see that tip right there, can mm. micro adjust it in like a really small increment. Right. This tool is awesome. That's neat. A mm. good combo square. There's a more traditional combo square. But what's nice, Number one, you can mark 90 degree angles. Okay. And then on the other side, you have 45s. Oh, nice. So this is a really versatile tool. A little shoulder plane. Shoulder plane? Shoulder planes are great. Whenever you have a, a, a rabbit or a rebate on an edge, if it ever needs some fine tuning, it cuts the whole width of the sole or the shoe of this plane. So I can come in and get right up against something yeah. and take a sliver off maybe this. So I can come right down, take a sliver. Or maybe there are situations where I actually need to make my rabbit deeper so I can come in this way and take a swipe. Oh. So rabbit planes are very useful when you're trying to like fine tune stuff. Um, let's see. But if you're doing fine woodworking, you need nice chisels, sharp chisels. All right, so that's the kit. That's the Johnny kit. That's the kit. I got one more. I'm throwing in a bonus for you. All right. What's so important that you got to break the rules? These are just great. These are just great. What is it? It's just a piece of metal. It's just a piece of metal. It's a card scraper. Okay. There's this little burnishing knife right here. And the way that these work, and I can actually do it to the bench, you, they take small amounts of material off. Oh. So instead of like sanding in some applications, but you can use a card scraper to take a lot of material off. And the way it works, it's kind of cool. You use this burnishing knife, which is harder steel than this is. Yep. And through like a series of motions, you form like a little mushroom. Oh. Almost on like a microscopic level. You're right. like You're like folding out the edge on each side. And that little burr becomes your cutting edge for doing something like, like that. It like scrapes it. You can almost like 
can almost feel it with your fingernail. Oh yeah, it's like really tiny. Really, really, really tiny. small. Almost, not microscopic, but yeah, really, yeah. really small. These things are great. That's pretty cool. These things are great. That's All my right. kit. Go. All right. How's it going, Jay? Yeah, pretty good. You got some tools for me? I do. Kind of narrow it down because I like dabbling in a lot of different types of stuff. I went with tools that I use for sculpture carving. Been branching out more recently with like larger sculptures like the frog and uh, the axe from last year or whatnot. So to kind of start off, my bigger tools, sawzall and my angle grinder with a nice rasp bit on it. This is new. I have not used this yet, but I really wish I had it when I was carving the frog. This uh, is a tiny chainsaw? Yeah. <laughs> I'm really excited to try this out. On smaller stuff with the more detailed stuff, I can't do without my rotary tool. I started mm -hmm. off with a Dremel and I burned, I don't know how many motors out when I started carving. This is uh, the upgrade, it's called a Fordham. So it's uh, got a much bigger motor than a Dremel does, but it's got a flex shaft. So this is all I have to hold as opposed to a four pound Dremel. Right. This gives me so much versatility. I can even swap out this handle and use a pneumatic chisel. Mm. Uh, again, like what I was able to mess around with on the frog. So this guy here does so much, gives me so many options. I, I really couldn't do without it for sculpture carving. And then one of the most overlooked, I think, tools, if you will, Sandpaper. Mm. Not my favorite part of woodworking. No, everyone says they hate it. Doing a little bit of sanding here or there, no big deal. Right. But if I'm doing a carving, overall takes me 20 hours. 12 hours of that is carving. I'm sanding for eight hours. But yeah, the difference between what sandpaper does to a piece of carved wood or shaped yeah. wood, it just, it's night and day, which really makes it pop. So it's a pain in the ass, but it's worth it. This group here, there's not much I can't carve with. Top five. This is tough. This is like desert island tools. Sure. Like, yeah. <laughs> if I'm on a desert island woodworking, yep. what five tools do I take? What are you gonna bring? Oh, did I can I group them together? Is this a tool? That's not really one tool. That's kind of a tool. This is like when I go to woodwork, I put this on. That's yeah, one tool. I don't know. Alright, I'll pick I'll pick one out of here. Hook roll. Okay. This guy is fantastic. Why is it so important? Most of your dimensions are very small, actually. So we're trying to get an accurate measurement. Yeah. You need like a good registration. So that's what this hook is about. So it mm. hooks on the end, and it has two sides, which is really cool. So the first side starts at six inches and goes to one. So that you can use when you're going for like depths and things like that. The real useful thing on the hook rule is it starts at zero and goes to whatever. So you can hook it and get like, that is three quarters of an inch thick. This is also good for setting up saw blades, router tables, mm. dados, like anything. This is like my setup tool basically. Got it. And it's pretty accurate. It goes down to 30 seconds of an inch, which is usually good for any woodworking you're doing. If you're going more accurate than that, grab a caliper. But tomorrow, the wood's gonna move and it doesn't matter anyways. <laughs> Hook rule, number okay, one. Number this one. is actually, this is like, Number one tool. Oh, the puppet top. Bennett, have you done your five tools yet? I yeah. have. What do you think? It's a good one. I have my speed square, which I put in there, which is ruler and a. Yeah. Some people use like a combo square. That's what it is. I like this guy. This is... let's, let's dig in. Yeah. Let's see what we got. Wow, you got a lock on there and everything. I have a lock that's not locked. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tailor this more to hand woodworking. Okay. Marking knife. Mm. When you are marking things out, a pencil actually is very fat and thick. When you mark with a really sharp knife, you have like zero dimension almost. Right. So you can get very, very accurate. Johnny picked that too. Johnny picked a mark knife? Yep. Yeah. The man that knows accuracy right there. <laughs> oh God, this is so hard. Five is not a lot. No. Five is not a lot. Oh. Chisels. Yeah. I'm gonna pick specifically a half inch chisel. I probably use this like 90% of the time when I'm actually doing chisel work. Chopping dovetails out, paring tenons down. Sometimes when you mark a line, you chisel it to make it deeper and easier to see. A half inch chisel is very versatile. I got a one inch, a quarter inch, some eighth inch, like all sorts of different sizes. 90% of the time I'm reaching for this guy. Mm. Very, very nice and hard steel chisel. Number three. Mm. Oh my God. Two more. 
Two more. I'm gonna go with my favorite tool in the whole entire world. It's, it's so cute. This is, they call it a violin maker's plane, okay. but it's essentially a really, really small block plane. So a block plane is a low angle hand plane. So it's really good for end grain cuts. This is also really good for like throwing little chamfers and bevels on the corners of things. And this one's great because it's got a little mechanism here that you basically loosen it up and then you can feed the blade really accurately in and out to adjust your depth of cut. Oh, okay. Which is super nice. And it, it's just so cute. It is cute. And it fits in the palm of your hand like perfectly. Yeah. I usually use this right before finishing something mm. to like do the final fit and finish on things. Number four. Okay. Violin maker's plane. <laughs> a block plane. Have you ever made a violin? I want to, I have not. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh, Matt. Only one more. One more. <laughs> This is fucking hard. Mallet's pretty good. Hitting stuff is important. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. I got four more on the wall right there. <laughs> Hitting stuff is important. We'll yep. go try square. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, okay, so why this can't do what this do? No, no it can't. So a tri square is specifically for making right angles. Okay. And that's like all it does. You can see these, both of these are fixed. So as soon as you get a combo square that like slides, anytime you have movement, it can like get out of whack. So like this is great, but because this moves and has like movement. It has give. I guarantee you this is not 90 degrees. Right. Whereas this guy, it's 90 degrees. If it isn't, you literally take like a stoner file and you like work it so it's dead nuts 90 degrees. Mm. And then you use this to lay on a piece of wood with your marking knife to mark a line that is perfectly 90 degrees right. with a reference edge. That's the five. That's that's my five. You feel good about that? No, because <laughs> I can't cut anything. <laughs> yeah. So would your last thing be like a saw, I guess? A hand, like a little hand saw or something? It would be a saw. The saw I actually want doesn't have a handle right mm. now. <laughs> I'm making a handle for oh, okay, it. okay. I like to buy tool kits and then make them. Mm. So this is a sash saw. Yeah, put it in there. Just yeah. put it in there. A sash saw is really good because you use it to do cross cutting. You can use it to do some fine rip sawing, which is like along the grain. You can cut dovetails with the saw if you really want to. Oh. They have small oh, yeah. itty bitty saws specifically for dovetails, but all this guy does is cut dovetails. What? Dovetails, that's it. These guys. Yeah. That's what it cuts. Mm. So yeah, a saw is pretty important. Okay. I'll let you, I'll let you have it. Five and a, a gimme. <laughs> this is what I use. You can see I have like a toolbox full of tools. Yeah. But if it was like, oh, you have to only have five, yeah, I would switch this out for these two guys. And honestly, when you're doing hand tool woodworking, you don't really use rulers. You don't use measurements at all. Here's what you actually use for measurements. A pair of dividers. You can transfer measurements. So I can go and I can like take a measurement and now I got that measurement. Okay. I don't care what that measurement, I don't care if that's three quarters or seven eighths yeah, or yeah, 13 yeah. sixteenths. I got that measurement, I can go and like scribe this on a piece of wood right. and get that piece of wood exactly the right width that I actually need in reality. You're using like proportions and relations. All right. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll keep just, going, I'll no. keep going. <laughs> no, you're done. Cutting you off. Cut me off. <laughs> I started making a fiddle when I was back at Plymouth Plantation. I, I don't never even know the it. difference. Uh, I don't think there is a difference. Okay. A fiddle is what you play folk music with. A violin you play classical music with. Is that all it is? The difference? Yeah, it's exactly the same instrument. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure if the size, like the fiddle was a little bit smaller. No, I don't or... no that's like violin, viola, yeah, yeah, yeah. cello. I don't fucking know. I'm not a music guy. You think she's ever going to come at you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, actually, a fiddle uses natural animal strings and a violin, you, like some bullshit. <laughs>